Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing today? You probably heard about it. Async void is evil, but why? In this video, we're going to explore the reason behind it and why it's not 100% avoidable. And toward the end, I'm going to construct a solution with you so that the async void could be used safely when we have to use it. Let's take a look at the simple case. This is an empty console application. I'll start by creating an async void method. It will delay for 100 milliseconds. And then I'll put the message drop down. Then I'll call it in main method. After that, let's uh, output a message. And let's run it. We see in the result there's a hello from main, but there's no job is done. That is because there's no await on async job. And the whole process quits before the async job is done. So this is a problem one. You cannot await an async void method. If it would be just like that, I would say it's bad, but it's not evil. I might even call it a feature of fire and forget. I was kidding. This method cannot be awaited, which means it cannot be unit tested. It is bad. And in some cases, if we want to wait for the result, we can put something there to prevent the processing from finishing. For example, wait for the user to press any key and let's run the code again. It will wait until I press any key on the keyboard. And by then, largely, the job is done. But then, why is it evil? That is when the async job start to throw exception, like what I'm doing. And as good developers, we all know the importance to have proper exception handling. So we're going to catch the exceptions and return a more friendly message. Let's run the code and see what it yields. Uh-oh. Instead of the message friendly arrow, it is that raw exception. So here's the number two problem. We try to catch and handle an exception and the exception couldn't be caught, that is evil. One more detail on this thing is, I didn't press any key, and the process got crashed. In other words, not only the unhandled exception escapes the try catch, but it also crashed the whole process. How did that happen? Let me explain. This is how it happened in a nutshell. Imagine every task runs on its own context. Now I want to be very clear, this context is an abstraction, it doesn't really map to anything that is concrete, like a thread or something like that. It is there for me to explain what had happened. Okay, tasks runs on its own context. At the very beginning, we create a try catch section. Then we call the async job. Async job is dispatched to its own context for execution. Now those two contexts start to run simultaneously. Let's focus on context two. At the very beginning, it starts to delay for 100 milliseconds. And then there's our exception. Normally, if this would be an async task, that exception would be handled by the context. And then it would be attribute to the task, and the task would be awaited on context one. However, in this case, we had an async void. So there's no task object that we could set an exception on. So the exception became unhandled, and it ended up blow the whole process. And that was what happened. At this moment, I think I could give you the conclusion that everybody is going to tell you as well. Avoid async void. Actually, that doesn't matter. You have your own conclusion already. Now, wonder with me. Why it exist? Because uh, sometimes we have to use it. What you are seeing here is a very simple WPF application. We have a button click event handler on line 18. And then we have that async job on line 23. This is a normal async task job because uh, we want to avoid async void like we said before, right? The scenario that I'm going to build next is when the button is clicked, I'm going to run the job. And you can tell this is a very common scenario. You either click a button triggered something like query a database, writing a file, a lot of operations that could be async. So let's try while those up. The first thing we're probably going to notice is that there's a warning. Reading the description, because this call is not awaited, the execution of the current method continues before the call complete, and then it's suggested to add a wait in front of the call. Okay, let's follow the lead. By adding the await, we got an arrow back. It says a wait can only use in an async method. Yeah, so button click need to be async, except we cannot really do that. Otherwise, we break the signature or button click handler. Check this out by yourself. There you see the compile arrow, button click, has the wrong return type, so we have to change it back to avoid. But we still need to deal with the error or warning on async job. Watch out this moment. Without experience, we might get desperate and fall into thinking it was just a warning for a wait. 
let's change it back and just call it day to that. I'm going to say, don't do it, don't do it, and don't do it. I said it three times because that is very, very important. Don't do it. And I'm sorry, I'm going to do it to show you why. I'm going to remove the wait. I'm going to show a message well, after we call the async job. I want to explicitly point out on line 27, there is an exception. The async job is not going to be successful. Now let's compile and run the code and see what's going to happen. Well, excuse me for the gigantic button. I'm not a UI designer, but when I click it, there's no exception. And do it again. No exception. Okay, great. Code actually runs. No exception, right? Wrong. The exception is there. We wrote the code. We know there is an exception. That async job is not successful. However, there's no symptom. So this is a case where an unhandled exception neither reveal itself nor crash the process. That's a recipe for a debugging nightmare. If async void is evil, this is 10 times evil. Luckily, there is a warning to remind us, which is, by the way, a reminder not to ignore warnings. Okay, but then what should we do? Well, if we can't beat them, join them. The solution is use async void, but we need to overcome those two problems. No place to await and they escape the exception. Let's tackle them one by another. Let's deal with the exception first. When the exception is not handled within async void, it crashes the process, so we catch it in place. Once we have it, we need to decide what to do. Well, usually, we would let the caller to decide. So instead of trying to handle it here, we need to have a delegate. Let's call it on exception. Imagine the code flow when exception happens, on exception will be invoked, and the delegate of on exception is going to handle the exception. Let's update the caller so that you know what I'm talking about. Now let's see how it looks like. Okay, we're halfway there. The process doesn't crash. We know there is an exception because of the error dialog. Along with the error is the async job is called message box. That is the part that I'm not satisfied with. I want it to when the job is done and there's no exception. So let's update the code again. Although we cannot wait on async void, we could use another delegate for async completion. And then it becomes just a matter of uh, passing on the uncomplete handler. Let's run it again. What you are seeing is when there's an exception in async job. Let me comment out the exception and try it again. Okay, isn't this what we want? I mean, async avoid, but we still know when it succeeded or failed. This works, and I'm going to show you how to make it better. Let's reveal the code. In order to catch the exception, we made async job, async void, and then we put that gigantic try catch, catches everything, and it uses the delegates to handle completion or exception, right? We actually introduced the two disadvantages. First, thanks to async void, Async job becomes difficult to test. That's due to the same, you cannot wait on it. Secondly, this won't be the only method that need to be called by a handler. Do you want to make every one of them async void? Probably not. So I'm going to show you how to improve on those. The idea is to separate the error handling and the task by itself. So I'm going to firstly restore async job to async task. I'm going to call it async job to temporary to avoid naming conflicts. Then I'm going to make the async void method a middle method. This one runs a task handles exception. 
but it doesn't need to know what the task really do. So a task with a common parameter. And uh, let me rename it to wrong task with callbacks. Let's update the caller. With this wrong task with callback in the middle, we don't need to convert every async task method to async void. It shares the logic for error handling, and it runs well. Let's try that out. Okay, last one, 10 seconds. Make it the extension method for the async void. I'll show you the code quickly on the screen and it will be shared on my GitHub. This is of course the syntax sugar, but you're gonna like it if you are doing it all day long. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and keep coding, keep improving. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.